Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be with you guys this morning. I'm so sorry I'm a few minutes late, but I just wanted to come on and talk to you guys about alopecia awareness. I'm really, really excited about this month being September and our efforts in bringing to you all more information and more knowledge about what you could possibly be dealing with in the form of alopecia. Um, as I came on last Saturday, I told you guys about the push globally. Um, I am with a team of trichologists across the nation, and we are bringing awareness to our communities about alopecia and hair loss and the things that affect and cause hair loss, because we want to bring this information to you all to make sure that you have some support with some of the things that you don't understand. And um, we have launched globally together, and there is a lot of different efforts taking place. There are a lot of different efforts that are taking place across the nation. We will be having an event coming towards the end of the month um, on the last day of the month, um, last Monday. Sunday of the month, excuse me. We are having an alopecia awareness night where you can come in and actually get your scalp scoped and possibly be identified if you have never been identified with um, alopecia and then get some further guidance and know where to go, whether it's the next step going to see your physician or either coming in to get treatments in the salon. We will help you to be able to get connected so that you have those options. So I'm excited. Again, my name is April Kearney. I am a hair practitioner of trichology here in Pflugerville, Texas, and I own Bling Hair Restoration and Revival Systems, and I have a product line that I've been using on my clients for about the last seven years. And so I have just launched this product line publicly outside of my clientele base in order to help people who are suffering with this problem or just needing to have a reliant, um, supportive system of cleansing and regeneration that is available to help them um, with their transitions. Uh, but today, this morning, I'm going to be talking to you about our first initial cause of alopecia, and we're going to be talking about alopecia areata. So basically, alopecia areata is really just, it means hair loss, hair loss. And alopecia areata, when a person has a medical condition that is surrounded by hair loss, that's what it is called, alopecia areata. So alopecia areata, uh, the hair falls out in round patches, and the hair can fall out on the scalp or anywhere else on the body. But not everyone loses all their hair on their entire body. Um, some people it's just generated to the scalp. And so that's what we're gonna focus on today is hair loss on the scalp. And so um, the alopecia areata focusing on hair loss on the scalp is, um, it happens to about 5% of people. And hair often grows back, but it may fall out again. And so it can be a continuous back and forth um, situation and issue that people face with are faced with because alopecia can attack people who are completely healthy with no um, pre-exposure of any issues at all. And what alopecia does, it affects the autoimmune system. And that is one of the main causes that I see um, within my practice are people who suffer with autoimmune deficiencies and then have hair loss um, as a result of that. And so um, hair often grows back. I do want to tell you that if you do suffer with alopecia um, and you have bouts with hair loss 
and alopecia where it is smooth to the touch and seemingly bald in areas, you have hope that area can grow back. It really depends on the root cause and the source of the hair loss. And um, when it is an autoimmune deficiency that is at the root cause of that hair loss, we have a lot more, um, our boundaries are a little broader in treating that because when you are dealing with an autoimmune deficiency, your body can be chemically out of balance. And with a change of practice and sometimes medication as well, um, you can be balanced to where it gives your body a better environment and a fighting chance to be able to support the uh, process of growth. And so I want to get a little scientific with you all this morning and show you all what you cannot see underneath the skin's level to where the root of the hair grows from. And I want to explain to you just a little bit of the structure of the hair follicle and the hair shaft. What I wanted to show you all this morning is the, here we are here, uh, get the screen together. This right here is a diagram of the skin and where the hair grows from. This right here that you all see, this is your follicle. And this is the strand of hair growing out of the follicle. Oh, if I can get my, there we go. That's the strand of hair that you see that grows out of this follicle. The follicle is where all the nutrients are housed that feed that healthy strand of hair that we see on the outside or we don't see. And when alopecia takes place, you no longer see those strands of hair coming out. But the root cause of what you do not see here comes from here. It comes from the skin. It comes from the circulation of blood flow. It comes from the amounts of nutrients that the body is able to properly receive and then redisperse. Right here is the root of the follicle and the nutrients are provided by the pulpula. And the pulpula is where the blood flow comes from. And so I just wanted to show you a scientific form of what you all may not be able to understand because the information that I'm going to give you from this point is going to be talking about what's on the inside that manifests on the outside. <clears throat> and so with that in mind, alopecia, it's not contagious. Um, a lot of people start to have different anxieties when they are faced with hair loss and their scalp and hair starts to do something that they're unfamiliar with, but it is not contagious. Alopecia, um, it is not due to nerves alone, but alopecia is affected by nerve inflammation. And so when there is inflammation at the follicular level, where that follicle was, where I showed you where all the nutrients are housed, where the hair grows from, when those follicles are affected and the muscle tissue is affected by autoimmune um, uh, interrupters, there cause, there's a lot of inflammation that takes place. And so when that area is inflamed, and swollen, a lot of times it will not be able to house a healthy root shaft of hair, and then you start to experience different phases of hair loss. And so, um, good morning, Terry. How are you? Give me a handshake or a thumbs up if you can hear me and see me. I think you're the first one to join me this morning. So, uh, great to see your name. I'd love to see your face. But I'm talking about alopecia areata and this is alopecia awareness month and so today's focus is going to be about that specific uh, portion um, of hair loss 
And so I'm saying that alopecia is not contagious because a lot of people are um, concerned uh, and very sensitive about, um, Terry, can you hear me? Because I don't see any other interaction. Can you send me a little message just to let me know that you can hear me and everything is where you can see as well? I'd appreciate it. I'm doing this on my computer this morning versus my mobile device. So this is the first one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, alopecia, it attacks the um, nervous system by an overproduction sometimes of uh, white blood cells. And so um, it attacks the hair follicle and it is an autoimmune issue whether people realize it or not, because when your immunity is low, it causes you to have different responses. And your hair and your skin and your nail are the fastest growing appendages on the body. And so it really does um, manifest itself at the, at the beginning by the hair and the skin and how it responds. And so, um, the blood, white blood cells attack the follicle and it keeps it from being able to uh, receive the nutrients and provide a great atmosphere for healthy hair growth and a productive and consistent cycle of growth. So there are three phases of hair growth. Antigen phase is when the hair is vibrant and it's growing and it's healthy and you can get trims and it grows right back. You can change trim styles and you get a chance to have um, different uh, layers and you just are really enjoying when you are going through the antigen phase because your hair is healthy, it's thriving, and it's just vibrant. Um, that phase can last, gosh, a couple of years. It can last two to four years consistently. But then we go into the next phase, which is called the telogen phase. And that phase is a resting phase. So what you are seeing at that time is when you go and get a haircut or a trend fashion, but it doesn't grow back as quickly. And you're wondering, gosh, my hair used to grow a lot quicker than what it's appearing and it actually is starting to get a little thinner, a little sparse, but it may not necessarily be falling out. It's just in its resting phase. Um, but shortly after the onset of that second phase called telogen phase, it then starts to shed and that hair is released from the follicle and then you go into the next phase, and that phase is called the catagen phase. And that catagen phase is when that hair completely releases from the root, from the follicle, and there's no more nourishment taking place. And um, I'm so sorry. There's no more nourishment taking place. And that's when you start to see the skin. That's when you start seeing the skin out. That's when you start to experience even sometimes the stubble. You are then in the red phase of hair loss, which is the catagen phase. Now that catagen phase takes place for a lot of different reasons, normally just the normal growth and hair loss cycle. But that catagen phase can also be affected by autoimmune um, issues, lupus. Um, thyroid issues, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. It can also be affected even by fibromyalgia, which is a new autoimmune deficiency that is now on our radar. I personally suffer with alopecia um, that has been induced by my fibromyalgia. And I have bouts of hair loss on and off. Um, it does grow back very quickly, but it's because I have inflammation in my scalp and my hair goes from a telogen phase all the way to a catagen phase because of what my white blood cells are doing and because of the inflammation in my nerves. And so um, I have a personal um, attachment to the autoimmune areas of hair loss. Um, sorry about that as well.
Okay. I think I'll do it on my mobile device next time. Excuse me, Terry. Um, but Terry, you can ask me any questions as we go along. Um, I'm going to be on for about 15 more minutes. And so if you have some specific questions about hair loss or hair thinning, then feel free to chime in and I will try and get your questions answered. Um, but as far as the hair growth cycle and autoimmune issues, that is really the process of how it takes place. When you're in an antigen phase, you're growing, it's healthy, it's long, it's even thicker or as thick as you are predisposed to have genetically. Then you go into a telogen phase, which is more of a resting um, where it's not falling out, but it's just not growing as quickly. And then what alarms people is when you go through that catagen phase, when that hair is coming out, it's visibly coming in handfuls, you're noticing that it's thinner and um, it's um, just not in a, the best state. And so uh, people who experience alopecia that have gone through that phase of hair loss, what happens is um, you have a genetic predisposition a lot of times for the problem. But however, it's still something within your system that takes place in order to trigger that hair loss. And so we're going to talk about some of the triggers that cause the hair loss. Now, with the um, triggers, it can be a viral or bacterial infection that causes or the onset of the alopecia. It can be vaccinations, also stress levels. Um, goodness, the, the skin, when you have different trauma to the skin, whether you get a bump, a cut, um, goodness, relaxer burns, which would be in the chemical phase. Um, there's lots of different triggers that cause the alopecia. Good morning, Miss Bridget. I love you, love you, love you, Miss Terry. Um, so Terry, you're asking the question that, so this is a different form of hereditary hair loss. Uh, yes, alopecia areata is the general umbrella of hair loss. And so heredity does fall underneath alopecia areata. When I say genetics, that is the category that I'm speaking of as well. And what I was um, saying is that you have to have a genetic predisposition, Terry, for hair loss and for alopecia. It doesn't mean that everybody in your family will be suffering from alopecia or hair loss, but your genetic profile does cause you to be uh, predisposed to be more susceptible to hair loss. So if that makes sense. So on the other side of things, um, hair loss and alopecia, when it comes to your family orientation and genetics, it will lie dormant until something else takes place in your life, such as the triggers that I just mentioned. So we've got viral or bacterial infections that come, sometimes come on. You can have a high fever that may last a day or two. And what that does, it spearheads and it wakes up whatever you are genetically predisposed to, and it can cause an onset of alopecia. And I'll tell you something how you can know that if that is what you have been dealing with is if you for some reason have a cold or a flu last year we had a flu epidemic that was out of this world we had people that were coming down with the flu that had the flu shots and they also even ran out of the flu shot and this started taking place october november and it raised its head in december of last year so what i saw in the salon was in march and april I had a lot of clients coming in with hair loss. Their hair was shedding, their scalp was irritated. They had even a few cases I had of alopecia. And what we were able to determine is that each of these cases had in comma the influenza virus that they had suffered with. And a high number of these people had received the flu vaccination. And so um, whatever happens in your body that is a trauma-related um, issue, 
it will manifest on your skin and your hair in about three months, two to three months after the onset. So if you have a high fever in about two to three months, if you are going to experience hair loss, that's when it will manifest itself. So a lot of people don't connect the two because they're like, I'm better, I'm not sick, there's nothing going on, I'm not stressed, but I don't know why my hair is coming out. So we tend to backtrack as um, hair practitioning trichologists and problem solve to see what the root cause of the hair loss is. And for a lot of people this last season, it was the viral infection, the flu. And so that was one of the biggest triggers. And that helped to have people to um, start to recognize that if their body starts to change, pay attention to their hair, pay attention to their scalp, because you also will see your hair and skin change. So whatever you put into your mouth that goes into your body will show up on your hair, will show up on your skin, which is why your diet is very important, which is why your um, uh, vitamin intake of nutrients is very, very important, and which is also why it's very important to manage your stress levels too. But um, exposure to something new, even environmental changes, can also lead to hair loss, um, sudden changes. Um, also, I include in environmental changes, atmosphere changes. When you switch uh, salons, when you change stylists, when different people are doing different practices on your hair, that can also trigger um, a different response with um, maybe not alopecia as far as balding and or thinning at the scalp, but your hair can start to transition and start to shed because it's experiencing new products. Also, when people move to different areas and the water is different, that can also cause different responses um, and different texture feels on your hair. Um, I don't know about Miss Bridget. She moved to the Dallas area just recently. And so I know that your hair has gone through different changes and then also, being an expectant mother, your uh, hormone levels are um, fluctuating. And um, right now, you are most likely in a antigen phase where that hair is growing, growing, growing. Um, but your body will go through transitions, Miss Bridget, after you have the baby. And so we'll talk online or offline uh, about how to support you so that you can keep that beautiful head of hair that you have. Um, but alopecia, back to our topic, alopecia areata can occur um, about four weeks um, to four months after the onset of your virus or after the onset of whatever triggers it. Um, and again, stress, illnesses, change in medication, uh, change in environment and lifestyle, those can trigger hair loss. Um, so let's talk about stress and alopecia. Stress can also influence alopecia areata, through, though its effects are, they're, they're sympathetic nerve effects, but it depends on a person's predisposition and how they um, handle stress in their lives if it manifests in hair loss. So we do see people who have high level stress jobs who um, don't get enough rest, so it's stress on their system. And those things can also cause hair loss. But normally that comes in the hair thinning because it you're not receiving the right nutrients and the right oxygen to your follicle. Uh, rest and sleep is very important because when you're able to sleep and get rest, your body renews. And so if you're not sleeping enough and you're not getting the right amount of rest and you're not balancing your stress levels well, then you will also, you're in a category and opening yourself up to experience more hair loss issues um, with that. Now, the... Um, way that the body can respond and recover from stress is by getting enough rest, drinking enough water, and making sure that your diet is balanced. And that's without adding anything extra. So when I see people in the salon and in the clinic and they're dealing with high stress levels and we are starting to experience hair loss, the first thing that I recommend to do is to evaluate the season that you're in and also what you're putting in your mouth. 
A lot of times when we can de-stress and we can start to get enough water in our systems, we can start to uh, get enough rest and also maybe even start exercising if we're not, those simple things will help with the change too. So the other causes of alopecia areata moving from stress is um, treatments, medications. So medications like chemo, of course, causes a complete change in your um, structure uh, because you are dealing with um, toxic um, influxions in your system. And so when you're dealing with chemo and the responses of chemo, it does affect the follicle level in your follicle does go dormant. And sometimes even that, chem that chemo will kill the follicle where it will not have regrowth. But most times, once you're finished with chemotherapy, the hair does start to grow back, the follicle is re-energized, and that hair texture will come back differently because you're dealing with a completely different root, a completely different level of nourishment, and the level and textures will change several times in between until you're balanced completely out and you're cancer free. And so if that is something that you are dealing with, there are some other therapies that can help to support you through that. And you can reach out to us at the Bling Hair Restoration and Revival Systems um, on our page to get more information about that. Um, I am offering free 15-minute consults for each person that books with us online this month. And I am doing those online over the phone. And so please book a time. The times are available um, when you go on the calendar and we will set aside 15 minutes to talk about some of your issues. And then if need be, our next step after that is having you to come in the salon for a complete trichology um, consult and exam. Um, Terry, if you are still online, then you are due to come in for a follow-up all follow-up appointments are complimentary, and you can get scans as well um, with those follow-up appointments. So what you can look for with your um, exam is, oh, hey, Shay. Hi, Trell and Karen. Okay. So um, what you can look for with your 15-minute consult is we'll go over some history to try to get down to the root problem of why you're losing your hair. Um, I've had several consults this week since our last live, and um, a lot of them were um, just problem solving. So a lot of times when you're able to speak to a professional that will help you with your uh, identifying the source and uh, cause of the problem, you can then start to put a process in order of treating it. And so um, a lot of times people will choose to rest their hair without knowing how their hair, uh, why their hair is coming out. But I encourage you to research and to get some support and find the root cause of why you're losing your hair before you decide on a protective style or a protective solution. Um, because you have to take care of what's underneath. So if you're wearing weaves or braids and you're dealing with thinning and hair loss prior to putting them in, um, the next time it's time for you to take them down, please seek professional help so that you can make sure that you're not covering up an issue that needs to be addressed while you are resting your hair. Um, so another thing is not everybody loses all of their hair due to alopecia. Sometimes it's just in very small areas. And so when it comes in those small areas, sometimes you can't see it. So you always wanna make sure that at least once every quarter that you are having a scalp exam and having someone else take a look at what you can't see in the back because sometimes that alopecia can be hidden and especially if you have a thick head of hair, because as I said, when we started, alopecia can affect people who even have healthy, healthy hair. And so um, I don't have any other questions that are coming through right now, but what I wanted to leave you all with before I end the live feed 
is some of the things that people don't realize that cause hair loss, I want you all to be made aware of so that you can pay attention to how your body responds. So there are things that you can take into your body, such as antidepressants, which a lot of people are taking now because of the stresses of jobs and environments. Um, also, birth control pills and contraceptives also can have the side effects of hair loss. We see a lot of that with women between the ages of 16 and 45. Um, and also the types and changes in your contraceptive choices, uh, whether it used to be the injections or the Depo-Vera shots all the way to the intake of pills, those can cause your growth cycle to be interrupted because they affect your hormones. And one of the side effects that's very, very common are changes in the hair and the skin. And so you want to check your contraceptives and make sure that that is not a side effect of it. Um, and because a medication may be listed as having a side effect, it may not always affect everybody the same, but if you are genetically predisposed to being more sensitive to chemical changes in your body, then your contraceptives and antidepressants will affect um, the hair and the skin. Other things that affect the hair growth and can cause alopecia is your gut health. Um, some people who suffer with ulcers or diverticulitis or acid reflux, um, those things, and gout, those things can affect the hair. And we've seen people that have those issues in those categories that have come in with thinning areas and hair loss, alopecia. Um, another thing is arthritis. Arthritis, whether it's rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis, any type of inflammation within the joints can cause hair loss as well. Reason being is inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. So if you have any type of inflammation in your body due to your gut health, due to arthritis, due to uh, medications that you may take, poor circulation, um, those can trigger hair loss as well. And then also vitamin deficiencies, the vitamin deficiencies um, are too many vitamins. Um, what people don't um, recognize sometimes is that when you have extra vitamins, you're taking a vitamin over here for hair growth, you're taking another vitamin over here to support your metabolism, you're taking another vitamin over here to possibly um, have a better eyesight. Sometimes you can have an overabundance of a nutrient and that can actually trigger hair loss as well. Uh, one of the common overabundance vitamins is vitamin A. So if you have too much vitamin A in your system, you can experience extra shedding and brittle hair. Um, also, my vegan brothers and sisters that do not consume proteins, a lot of times you will experience hair loss because of the imbalance of um, not having enough proteins or not balanced proteins in your system. And so you want to pay attention to some of those uncommon things, um, people who exercise and work out that take extra um, supplements for muscle retention and also metabolism boosting. A lot of times you are exposed to uh, possible attacks on your growth system, hair loss, um, due to an abundance of protein. Um, also triggers that will stabilize your metabolism so that you can lose weight or lose belly fat. Um, those types of things can cause hair loss as well. And so um, vitamins, deficiencies, different um, medical predispos predisposed issues, gut health, um, also high blood pressure medications. So your high blood pressure medications are one of the biggest things that we see in the salon. High blood pre pressure medication in people who are anemic. Those two areas are areas that we see uh, hair loss um, in people who take high blood pressure medication that has to be regulated, uh, those will cause um, hair loss issues. Also, people who are anemic that have low iron, um, those are the biggest causes of hair loss. Um, my client, to right over here, sorry, right above me, right here, uh, these two photos here 
this is low iron that you see, anemia. Um, and anemia, when your iron levels are low and you're not balanced, it you do not receive the right nutrients in your blood flow. So it cannot feed that strand of hair inside of the follicle. So you have to be really careful and make sure that your iron levels are where they're supposed to be. I do recommend you seeing a physician to make sure uh, that your blood um, count, your complete blood count, and your blood work is balanced out. Um, in your consultations with with me at the restoration and revival systems. I will then go over blood um, results as well as different blood uh, counts, uh, blood work that you should request from your doctor. Um, your blood work should, as a female, check your thyroid levels as well as your iron levels, your ferritin levels. And so some of those common things you want to make sure that the doctor, even your general practitioner um, on your annual visit is uh, checking for. And most of us, they're check checking for cholesterol, they're checking for glucose levels, and they're checking for thyroid levels as well as iron levels. So that's pretty common. Um, but pay attention to the readings of those because what is nationally recommended is not always um, where it's not, what is nationally recommended is not always the best level for you to be at. If you are, if your doctor is telling you that your levels are fine, but your body is telling you something different, then you need to make sure that you're following up. Listen to your body. Your body does not lie to you. You push you, um, if you're not satisfied with the results from one doctor, then you change to another doctor. But you want to make sure that you're taking ownership of your health because your health is your wealth. And you have to make sure that you are a good steward over what's taking place in your body. So don't ignore it. When you get your blood work done, know how to read that blood work. If you don't know how to read it, contact me. I will help connect you with someone if I don't have the answer so that you know what's going on on the inside of your body and what your blood is saying. Um, and that leads me to the last thing that I wanted to cover, your blood type. Your blood type has a lot to do with the color of your hair, the texture of your hair, um, the shape of your body, how you gain weight, how you lose weight. And so if you pay attention to what your blood type is, and you are making sure that you are eating for your blood type, that can also be a great way to support your hair growth, your energy levels, um, your focus, and just an overall well-being. And so within your blood, um, high blood pressure, when your blood pressure is irregulated and the medications that stabilize your blood pressure, they do uh, start to affect the natural process of what you're chemically exposed to. So blood pressure medication can cause hair loss. About 90% of people who take high blood pressure medication, um, they do experience hair loss. Once you start taking high blood pressure medication, um, that is something that you have to continue doing. Um, and there is a process to be able to wean it off, but you have to have the proper guidance from your doctor. You have to listen to your body and you have to make sure that your environment and the stress levels in your um, life are controllable. And so if you are someone who suffers with high blood pressure and you're taking medication and you're experiencing hair loss from that medication, you need to partner with a uh, trichologist as well as a um, endocrinologist and your general practitioner, and we all can work together for the health of your overall health, um, but as far as me, the health of your hair. So the um, last thing as far as today's information session with the um, alopecia areata is just to let you guys know that Alopecia areata, it is not prejudiced. It does not have a trigger as far as who it attacks. People who are completely healthy can suffer from alopecia areata. And um, people who are sick, um, they suffer with alopecia areata. So please reach out and get your consultation with me. Uh, there's a lot of information that's out there and what I am here to provide for you is a coaching relationship 
and also to be able to identify what you may be feeling and what you may be experiencing and help you to start on a path that will provide a solution with what you are dealing with. In the salon, we do a lot of low laser therapy treatments to treat hair loss to help produce hair growth. We also treat a lot of clients with oxygen therapy to make sure that nutrients are being um, uh, deposited into the follicle and then redispersed to help hair growth. We deal with cleansing, which is the most important thing. You have to make sure that the environment is clean in your scalp so that it can produce a good environment for healthy growth. Um, whatever you put into your body comes out on your scalp and your skin first. And so you want to make sure that you're having um, a process of pre-prep and pre-shampooing um, to go in and start to break up the sebum in some of the different toxins that can come out of your body. In the Bling Restoration and Revival Systems, we have a product called Awake. And this product here, Awake, is our scalp stimulator. And it actually is the pretreatment that goes in and it helps to dissolve sebum, helps to get rid of medication and different elements in the system that cause the uh, onset of hair loss. This also helps to prep for cleansing to get rid of dehydrotestosterone, which is DHT, that causes androgenetic hair loss and androgenetic alopecia. So awake is the first thing that I use on my clients when they come in for us to get the scalp started in the process of cleansing. Dissolve sebum, and it also helps with the buildup of DHT. Get, getting rid of the buildup of DHT. The next thing that we have after we do that is our blessed shampoo. This blessed shampoo is a DHT blocking shampoo, biotherapy shampoo, and this shampoo right here kills that DHT. DHT is formed in the body on a, gosh, minute by minute basis. When testosterone is changed into dehydrotestosterone, it goes in and it starts to eat away at the follicle. It blocks all the nutrients from the follicle being able to absorb and it does not get to the strand of hair. It starts to eat away at that follicle and that follicle starts to shrink and then that's when the hair loss takes place. So the DHT blocking shampoos are very, very important and they are not in every shampoo there are specific shampoos that treat the DHT abundance and our blessed shampoo is one of them that does. So if you're suffering it with any type of hair loss, this is a shampoo that you would need. Secondly, if you are suffering with your natural and some of the cleansers dry your hair that treat your scalp, we have a conditioner called Life. And this life follicle boosting conditioner is the conditioner that provides nourishment for the hair. And it also provides 25 essential aminos and acids to help with the uh, strength of the hair, the luster of the hair, the elasticity of the hair, which is how it can stretch and bend and be manipulated without breaking. So it helps to uh, replenish some of those things that are taken away sometimes during the cleansing process and sometimes are taken away because of medication or practices of um, traction and tension and pulling. So this life follicle boosting nourishing conditioner is amazing for the scalp, for the skin, and for the hair. So this is what we follow up our shampoo with. I'm going to backtrack for a second. If you have a response, negative response to shampoos, um, our shampoos are sulfate free, but the one that is most gentle, that is a great cleanser after the first step of the awake scalp stimulator is the Purely Blessed shampoo. Our Purely Blessed shampoo is a um, sulfate free option. Um, it is the DHEA free, and also it's really, really gentle. 
a cleanser for people who are highly sensitive but need to make sure that their hair and their scalp is refreshed and cleansed. This one does not have a DHT blocking element in it, but it is an amazing shampoo to cleanse the hair and get it ready to receive nutrients and allow the scalp to breathe and to have more of a viable option of growth. So this shampoo is one that can also be used two, three times a week or just every other week or however you choose to. But this is for more sensitive people that are dealing with just thinning issues or maybe just wanting to strengthen their hair. So after the shampoos and conditioners, which is what I just shared with you that just address common hair loss issues, we also have a leave-in conditioner, which is called Rebuild. This leave-in conditioner is a hair strengthener. It is designed with honey quat, which is a um, ingredient that helps to retain moisture and elasticity. So it works great for blowouts. It works amazing for strengthening of the strands. It also is great for detangling. Um, that's what I have on my hair right now. Um, as I did my twist out, I just did this rebuild in some of my beard oil, which I'll talk about on another feed. Um, the most important thing that I wanted to talk to you all about with the vitamins concern are the in life intercellular nutrient promoter. These have DHT fighters in them. It also has a saw palomento extract. It has omegas and it also has the ability to have, it has 11 DHT blockers within it. Now, this one here was developed to have the appearance of thicker, stronger hair while you're going through the process of regenerating growth after alopecia. And so the In Life Intercellular Nutrient Promoter is one of the best vitamin nutrient um, supplements to help support your hair while you are in need of growing hair back after suffering from alopecia areata. So this one here has a balanced um, supplement intake of vitamins and nourishment. You can look on our site to be able to see more information. Sorry, I'm not turning it around right. You can look on our site to be able to see more information about the ingredients here. Um, and so we're really excited about this product. I've been able to grow my hair back very, very quickly after dealing with alopecia, um, utilizing this process or this product here, my in-life vitamin nutrient provider. In this one here, um, I take one in the morning and one at night. It also helps with my energy levels and my metabolism as well. And so this is one of my favorite products out of the line. And so this one here, um, all of my clients that suffer with alopecia areata, no matter what the source is, they do take the in-life nutrient. So uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about minoxidil and some of the other treatments that um, people use for alopecia, but one of the ones that is very common um, is minoxidil. And so we have one, and I call this my clinical formula. It is called the Life Living Growth Enhancer. And so the Living Growth Enhancer is used daily on the balding areas. Then it is a proven stimulator that blocks DHT. It is 5% topical um, solution that goes right on the source. We have seen the stubble and the hair growth take place after the using of the living growth enhancer um, in a matter of about four weeks. Now you have to continue the usage of it and depending on the root cause of your alopecia, um, it will determine how your body responds to it. So a full consultation is required um, and necessary before you make the choice or we make the choice of this product being for you. Um, it is the 5% minoxidil. Um, the last one that I wanted to introduce you all to is my Miracle Follicle Energizer. This is one of my favorite ones. This is the natural alternative um, to the minoxidil. This one here has the 11, um, 11 DHT inhibitors and it has, it is the foundation of saw palometto. 
And Sal Palomento is a natural DHT inhibitor and fighter. And so that is the, the, um, that is the base of this product that goes in and helps to trigger and target uh, the root in the inside of the follicle and helps to fight and block that DHT. Now, um, this here, for some cases, people use both of them together, depending on the severity of alopecia and depending on the um, root cause, they can be used together. But this one I recommend for people who would prefer to not have a chemical treatment, who would prefer to have more of a nutrient-rich treatment. And so my next live feed, I will talk to you guys about the options of treating alopecia with essential oils. But today, I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about some of the root causes of alopecia areata. You can share this live feed with your friends, but also backtrack through the last five days of posts, and you'll get all of the information written that I said verbally today. So I thank you all so much for your time. I did go about 15 minutes over, but I just wanted to give you all a verbal explanation of some of the products that I recommend you use if you're suffering with alopecia. I thank you all for the support, and I'm so excited that you all joined me today. So look for our next live. We will probably do the live on Friday morning instead of Saturday morning, but I will post and let you all know um, what day and what time I will be on. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again. And thank you for the support. Please go on and book your 15-minute consultations. And I look forward to talking to you all and helping problems solve through your hair loss. Uh, situations. And stay tuned for an invite to our Alopecia Awareness Night, which will take place at the end of this month. The date will soon to come, and I will be posting that invitation this afternoon. So thank y'all so much for the support, and I'll talk to everybody soon. All right, y'all have a blessed Saturday, and I'm going to head off to work so I can start seeing my clients, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.